Today, we hear the church is built on a strong rock. May our parish be filled with life and energy, with prayer and love. May we be more like Jesus, treating each other with tenderness, serving each other in humility. May the words of Jesus today give us hope for the future. Thank you, Abima. We now dismiss the younger members of the congregation and two of our young people will come forward to receive the word of God in a language especially designed for their level of understanding. And so here we have Chikamji and we have Catherine. And they're going to learn about God's love for them, the children's liturgy, with the wonderful catechists, and other children can join them upstairs to learn more about God's place in their life. So Chikamji and Catherine receive the word of God and share it among your friends, and we'll see you again very shortly. And we call to mind our sins, and we ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. It's the 21st Sunday. All the readings begin at page 121. 121. And now the opening prayer. O oh God, you cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, so that among the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please take a seat for the readings. The theme of the Mass today is the keys. So Shebna has been given keys. He's the treasurer to the king, Hezekiah. But he's misused the money. He's built a mausoleum for himself. And so the keys are taken from him. He can't be trusted. And the keys are given to somebody who can be trusted. The keys are given to St. Peter to guide and to govern. Let's listen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts to Shebna, the master of the palace. I dismiss you from your office. I remove you from your post. And the same day I call on my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I invest him with your robe, gird him with your sash, and trust him with your authority and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. Should he open, no one shall close. Should he close, no one shall open. I drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a throne of glory for his father's house. The word of the Lord. He knows from afar, your 
The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. How rich are the depths of God, how deep his wisdom and knowledge, and how impossible to penetrate his motives or understand his methods. Who could ever know the mind of the Lord? Who could ever be his counselor? Who could ever give him anything or lend him anything? All that exists comes from him. All is by him and for him. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Peter has given the keys of the kingdom the authority to teach, to guide, to govern with humility and love. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he's John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say that I am? And then Simon Peter spoke up, you are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and may we ask God to bless a few simple words. <clears throat> I have a habit of locking myself out of the house, so I need a spare set of keys. So, 14 years ago when I arrived, got a spare set of keys cut, where would I hide them? So I decided to hide them in the flower bed. 
And as you leave the church, you'll see a single white dahlia that's just come into bloom. It's like a star. It's beautiful. That's where I hid the keys. They were six inches under the ground. But as time went by, and they were taken up to open and put down to hide, endlessly forgetting where they were, they began to rust. So I needed another key. So the key today to the property, there's three doors on this side, three doors on that side. Interiorly, there's half a dozen doors with keys. I put a single key under a stone. And please God, that stone will give protection against anybody with a Geiger counter. So you can forget that. Okay. <laughs> and that's the theme of today's gospel. The keys of the kingdom are given to Peter to teach with authority. What a lovely metaphor. Keys, you know. And that key is passed on, isn't it? From St. Peter, the first pope, to the next pope, to the next one, to the next one. Peter, Linus, Cletus, Sixtus, Cornelius. Until Pope Francis I, there's an unbroken chain, and each describes themselves as a servant of God. The servant of the servants of God is the Pope. I'm the servant of the people of God. The Pope is the servants, the servant of the servants of the people of God. So here I am, little simple priest, ordained by a cardinal who was appointed by the Pope, and that Pope will put his lineage back as early as St. Peter. So the first reading today, there's a treasurer to the king, and his name is Shebna. Now, Shebna has the keys to the treasures, and he dips in occasionally, and he helps himself to some of the cash and the jewelry. He uses it to build a mausoleum. It's beautiful. It's carved out of stone. And even today, you can see that mausoleum, and over the front is written in Hebrew, Shebna. Built a mausoleum. He's found out his greed, in a sense, has brought his own, his own death. His greed has built his own mausoleum. And the keys are given to somebody who can be trusted. St. Peter, in the gospel today, gets the keys. He's somebody who can be trusted to govern the church. <clears throat> but it's a bit of a puzzle because Peter blows hot and cold, you know. He's going to die for Jesus. And then, I've never seen this man before. Sometimes he's brave. At other times, he's like a piece of jelly. He thinks he can walk on water, but instead he ends up almost drowning. But slowly, Jesus shapes him into the rock. It takes time, but Jesus is patient. I know Jesus is very patient with me. And I know my faults and my failings, you know. But to conquer any of us, lust, pride, jealousy, it's a lifelong ambition to overcome any faults. And Peter, in a sense, has got many faults. He's a stumbling saint. Okay, But what a consolation for me and for you as we stumble our way through life, getting things wrong, endlessly forbidden, endlessly finding ourselves in the arms of Jesus, our hearts being warmed. But Peter has faith. I've got faith. And I think everybody here has got a great faith. He can say, you are the son of God. And what a colossal capacity he has for love. When people leave the church, you know, they still hunger to belong to something. They still hunger to belong. And sometimes they find themselves in various platforms, various forums. It's all done online, you know. And you might not meet another human being on your platform. You might not be there face to face. They're not all good. Some are toxic. Some are very, very dangerous, you know. And people today talk about atomization. We no longer cling together. We're separated by walls of concrete separated by guard dogs, yellow lines, etc. And yet Christ prayed for unity. So here's my little story for today. <clears throat> In 2011, November, I visited an island called Subsido. It's 
not in Scotland, obviously, it's in South Korea. I've got a population of about 200 people, it's famous for its birds, and that is my passion. Take a little boat there, there's no hotel. How do you live? You knock on the first door. If nobody answers, you go to the second door. Nobody answers, you go to the third door. They open the door, you make your needs known by the universal language of love. Can you feed me? Have you got a bed for the night? How much will that cost? What about two days? And a family will take you in, and they make you very welcome. You're part of a tiny, tiny community. You eat with the family. You hand over the money. They refuse to take it. They feel insulted. And a total stranger for two nights has made me welcome. I eat with tiny kids, doing little funny gestures with them, all the kind of things they do. This kind of thing. <laughs> so in Korea today, they'll now be grown up. And maybe they're teaching their own children to do the same thing. That's maybe how they remember me. You know. But it's wonderful, you know, tiny community, I eat with them sleep in the same house, I become one of them for a short while. No locks, there's no alarm system, there's no guard dogs. And if only we could replicate that a million times over. Because that's what Christ prayed for. He prayed for unity, and he prayed for love, and he prayed for peace. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. For there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have a young man who is very happy to lead us in the prayers of the faithful. So little Ike, would you like to come forward and lead us? He's a member of the Youth Cafe, and I think he's probably the best table tennis player in the church this morning. Let us pray for all who are ill, in their homes and in hospital. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us ask God to bless those who work for the sick, to heal and to comfort to visit the house band, to give hope to the distressed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May God help us to break our selfish habits, to put God and our neighbor before ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for those who have completed their journey through, through life. May they enjoy the glories of God's kingdom. Eternal rest yes, grant unto, unto them, them Lord, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us remember Mary's acceptance of God's will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of them, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. This is a streamed mass, so our thoughts go out to those people who are watching the service online. They may be lonely, they may be sick, they're trying to pray, they're joining with us even in cyberspace, but they're very much present in our hearts, and our thoughts go out to meet them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our offertory hymn is number 279. It's a beautiful hymn. We'll sing it together.
God, the glorious bands of golden angels sing. During Mass, remember to pray for the repose of the soul of Mary, Ola de Mesi. Members of our family are present among us this morning, and our hearts go out to them. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. For it is the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities, cleanse me, Lord, from all of my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, you gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We say preface number seven. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, and mighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God 
I will say the second Eucharistic prayer, which begins on page 24. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way for supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once we were giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you, and humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome, Lord, Mary, our Lady Maisie, into the light of your face. I welcome those innocent people who perish in the war today. Innocent people, mums, dads, families, non-combatants, Lord, welcome them. And a mercy in us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I will stand and pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus our Savior taught us. Our 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, <clears throat> that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the Jesus Christ, he said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Let us offer the church upstairs a sign of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. 
They did not bring me condemnation, but hell in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We are those who plead with the fruits of your work, O Lord. You bring forth bread from the earth and wine to cheer the heart. Playing the whole thing by the same church. Jesus is Lord, creation voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planted. 
Clementine May. Jesus is Lord, created universe. Sit sun, moon, and suns on heaven, cry, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Our communion hymn this morning is number 595 in your hymn book. Uh, Gordon Man at Table are sat down.
the communion antiphon, the earth is filled with the fruits of your work, O Lord. You bring forth bread from the earth and wine to cheer our hearts. We'll ask God to bless people watching prayerfully at home. And we ourselves will thank God in a moment of precious silence for his many, many gifts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy. Graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. If people would find all the intimations and timetable in the bulletin, please take a copy away to read at your own leisure. Sunday the 10th, the two religious nuns who prepare children for the sacraments will meet parents in the church upstairs immediately after the 11 o'clock mass to prepare for the next round of catechesal instruction for First Holy Communion for confession. There's a lovely feast of Our Lady on the 9th of September. Details are given here. There's men's and women's Discipleship retreats at Kilroy Castle. Wow. Fancy spending a weekend in a castle. You can if you're a man, you can if you're a woman. And all the details are given here. Discipleship retreats. They're organized by the Dominican sisters. They're all professional educationalists who have a little convent in Elgin. Many people came to the parish social. We had about 100 people last Friday. It was excellent. To raise funds for our young seminarians. Wouldn't it be priest, you know? They'll be standing here preaching the word of God. The bishop will give them the keys okay, that we spoke about. There'll be a spare set to hide in the garden. But they'll be one or other, maybe both of them, will be your priest sometime in the not too distant future. So thank you for all people who made that evening such a success. Got over about three and a half thousand was raised. The Lord be with you. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon me, your unworthy servant, and upon the good people gathered here this morning, through Christ our Lord. Let's go forth in peace to love God, to serve each other. And thanks be to God. There's refreshments in the, in the church upstairs after Mass. Our final hymn is number 420. We'll sing it together.